This is the Mariah Report. News, pop culture, and all things Mariah Carey. Hey, welcome back. It's the Mariah Report. I'm Martin Burgess. And I'm Dan Enriquez. And we have a little, you know, FYI, it was only a matter of time before it happened, but coronavirus has struck the Mariah Report. I know, it struck me, it struck me down, it got me, girl. It got Again, me. again. I know. So I, um, I'm just getting, oh, I mean, I'm sort of still in it, but I'm getting over it. But it got me again, it got me real good. Mm. So if you hear me coughing, sniffling, sneezing, or breathing heavy, it's just that good old COVID, girl. We're all going to do to be okay. And okay. Uh, the show must go on. Yeah, be warned. And we're not in the same room. We're lucky we had this had happened naturally. We're in separate uh, spaces. So yes, thank goodness the show can continue. There, still over there in New York. Yeah, it would have been a disaster if I was in LA because you would have had to isolate with all the equipment. I know, exactly. So yeah. uh, listen, timing is everything, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. Here we are. And of course, I could not miss this week because it is our final week for our big, big giveaway for Masterclass. I can't believe it's been a whole month already. Time flies. Time flies over here. It um, does. So I could not miss this episode. And we have to give a congratulations to last week's winner, yes. uh, Tony Harris. Annual membership to the Masterclass. Yeah, congratulations to him. That was our third one that we gave away. We have one left. So make sure you stay tuned for the code word and then click the link in the episode description. If you're hearing this and you don't see the episode description, head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you'll see it there. Click that. It's a Google form. Drop in the code word that's coming up sometime in this show and enter for your chance to win a whole year of member of um. Masterclass, Masterclass. on us. <laughs> exactly. Masterclass is also not sponsoring this giveaway. Mm-mm. You cannot trade it in for cash, money, or any other goods. And all the privacy and the rights and the things of that nature are all reserved. You know what I mean. Yeah. Absolutely. No shenanigans. Absolutely zero. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. None of that. You're going to watch your Mariah Carey lessons and be happy. Ex- yes. Yes, indeed. That's what you will do. You will get to class on time for the Mariah <laughs> class. <laughs> Actually, Dan, something funny happened. So, you know, uh-huh. in Patreon, in the after show, how we've been talking about bread making. Okay, And yes. the Masterclass one. I have an uh-huh. uh, update on the bread <laughs> situation. Okay, good. Because I need to know. Because now that I'm stuck at home, I need to be making more bread. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yes. And if you guys are not supporting the show over there on patreon.com slash the Mariah Report, you can go ahead, click the link. We have the link in the description and you can do that. Yes, you can. And final bit of housekeeping. If you haven't done so yet, please hit follow on your favorite podcast app. And head over to our YouTube page and hit subscribe. We're almost at a thousand subscribers, so help us out, please. Yes, we're over there on the YouTube. Um, but also, speaking of housekeeping, mm. can we do like a little small mini update for one of our previous guests that's been here on the Mariah Report? Oh yeah, this has been on my mind. Yes, absolutely. So I, I don't know how long ago it was. It was maybe a year or two ago. Time time is irrelevant. Pre-pandemic. Um, <laughs> exactly. But we had Michael R. Jackson on. And mm-hmm. um, now his show that he came on this podcast to promote is over there on Broadway. Official Broadway. So when he came on to our show, he was promoting it because it was off-Broadway. So it was like the first of official production of it, off-Broadway. Uh-huh. But now it got picked, it, it did really well. He won a Pulitzer Prize as a result of that. Um, and then he, it got picked up. He got some really big backers like RuPaul, Mindy mm-hmm. Kalen is one mm-hmm. of them as well. And now it's officially on Broadway in New York City. So if you're in New York City, go get yourself a ticket. Yes, it's called A Strange Loop. Yeah. It's, and uh, I mean, I haven't seen the show, but I hear amazing things. I read amazing things about it. So big shout out to him and congratulations. I know. Good for him. But yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. If you remember when he came on, he mentioned he worked on it for like 16 years or something. Right. A long time in the making. But look, you stick with it. You have passion for things. And, you know, eventually the timing will all work out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Um, And then another sort of update, I guess, is friend to the show, Misty Copeland. Do you know what I was just thinking? When (laughs) uh, when I was supposed to go see A Strange Loop, we had to go see Misty at the ballet. Yes. (laughs) That's why I missed it. 
how it, how it all comes. And yeah. so, and she's now expecting um, her first child. So congratulations to her too. Big congratulations. A new generation of Mariah fans in the making. That's right. So we love it. We love yeah. it. Uh-huh. And we're going to talk about Christopher Buckle later on in the show about the Met Gala because he's out there doing all the faces. There was a lot going on at the Met Gala. There's, oh my God. Yes. We're going to talk, girl. We're going to talk. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But let's get into what Mariah's been up to because we got a little things here, little things there. Where shall we start? Okay, let's catch up with the number one's vinyl. Oh, yes. Yes, because last week we were saying how it was um, released for Record Store Day. Yep. Um, and, you know, it ended up that it is worldwide. All the there way were, getting it. There were international sales. Yes, across the globe. Uh-huh. And um, then this week we hear, and this is something I did not expect, that uh, the number one's album has made a return to the Billboard Hot 200 albums chart. That was wild because I, I didn't realize they were selling that many on Record Store Day. That's what I thought. I was like, this is crazy. It, I mean, it, I think it probably sold tens of thousands. Yeah. I can't remember if there, like, there was a limited number or whatever. Maybe they sold out, honey, because Mariah made it all the way to number 20. I know. On the Billboard Hot 200 album chart. I know. I know. Isn't that Do crazy? you know what? Someone needs to study, Harvard Business School needs to study Mariah and figure out how she makes us buy the same thing over and over <laughs> and over <laughs> again and again. <laughs> That is just, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, when I looked at the Billboard Hot 200 chart, um, I mean, I think there were people, they were like, um, I don't know who was around her. Maybe like Billie Eilish was Mm. like two spots away from her. I mean, here she is decades into her career and Mariah's out here with the kids whose names I don't even know. Mm -hmm. And that's saying something. I know, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's big, that's big, that's big. I wonder if fantasy being on it had something to do with it. Because, you know, that's the hot song right now. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. And just like the whole nostalgia factor. Plus, Record Store Day is really, really big. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and, you know, like a lot of lambs were saying that they were waiting in line for, you know, a, a many, many hours. So, girl, oh. look, it, it's like the perfect timing for it. Right up there on the charts. Yeah, but also I think maybe these days, like an actual physical sale is worth a whole bunch of streams now. Oh, absolutely. So like actually selling the physical vinyl probably like gave it a huge boost versus people getting streamed on the chart there. Oh, definitely. They're very, um, what do they say? They're like, they're uh, weighted differently. Right. You uh-huh. know, like even if you like make a purchase, like say you purchase Fantasy, just the song, uh-huh. like that counts as like 1200 downloads or 1200 streams right Uh but then if you buy the physical it counts as like i don't know a million streams something like that allegedly (laughs) we don't know that we don't know we don't know that (laughs) but either way it all worked out and it's great it's great to see mariah up at the top of the charts again yeah Mm -hmm. and you know a number one on this chart means something different on a different chart. Yeah. Like for instance, Mariah's uh, number one's the vinyl. Mm -hmm. It was number 20 on the album chart, but it was number 11 on the vinyl sales chart. So it was even higher over there. Interesting. You know? Yeah. So it's all, it's all a thing, you know, uh, there's all the lambs out there who know the charts. Let us know. Let us know how it goes. And speaking of number 11. Yes. It was the kid's birthday this week. Now, talk about a segue, girl. Look at you. Girl. Look at you. <laughs> that was a good one. They're 11 years old. Can you believe I it? Know. I know. I sort of can't. 11, I mean, I almost don't even remember a time without them being around. You know what I mean? Memoirs. I mean, I right. Obviously, I do, but Memoirs. it's just been so long. I know. But then I'm like, it's only been 11 years. 11 doesn't sound that long, but... It's long. Yeah, it still sounds young. I think kids these days are grown, though. They got the phone out. They're doing things. They're on the TikTok. Oh, they're doing more than me on the phone. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. they got the TikToks. They got it all. Oh, for uh-huh. sure. Um, and we did get a couple pictures of them celebrating, I think, via Nick Cannon's social media. Oh, I didn't um, check that. And, yeah, they they had, you know, little cakes and things. They were cute. They're, you know, regular, normal old kids mm-hmm. doing what they do. Mm-hmm. And then um, I heard, again, this is just over here on the social media, so take everything with a grain of salt, but there was somebody who had 
tweeted that um, Mariah was with, with her kids at the Disneyland this past weekend. Oh, in Florida? And when I think they said Disneyland, which is here in California, but it could have been Florida. I don't know. Florida is closer to Atlanta. You, but you know, Mariah will get anywhere in the, the world. Chat. I know, she I know. Get anywhere in the world. So I don't know where it was, but somewhere in Disneyland, she went to one of the theme parks. Well, because when you saw the picture of the kids at the birthday with the birthday cake, yeah. they were wearing like Six Flags yes. um, uh, sweatshirts or something. Uh huh. But that was days before this girl said that she saw Mariah and she like gagged, but she couldn't say anything because she was a character. Oh, they can't say you stuff. Know they can't. They can't say anything. So she was like, you know, but yeah, she could only, uh, you know, divulge so much information. But again, that sounds on brand. I mean, you know, they're always over there. And then, you know, I was on the TikTok. Look, all this stuff is coming to me now. <laughs> Some I saw Nick Cannon on the TikTok, mm-hmm. and I don't know what it was. Something ridiculous. It wasn't even on his TikTok. It was on somebody else. And they're like, "Oh, I want to take pictures of you." And they were doing like this makeshift um, photo shoot. And then Mm -hmm. at the end, the guy was like, oh, you know, if you could do one thing for the rest of your life, like, what would you do? And he's like, oh, I would just go to the amusement park with my kids. Like, that's our favorite thing to do. So, you know, going to the Disney World or the Six Flags or wherever, like, that's just what they do. Don't you think they'll they'll get sick of it eventually? I'm sick of it. I'll tell you that. (laughs) Well, also, okay, here's what's um, creeping me out about it is that I know so many people with COVID right now, not only you around the world, people have COVID. Yes. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the more you're out, the more you're going to be, you know, and I'm vaccinated, boosted all the above, you know, yeah. and I still got it. So, I mean, you still got to be cautious of, you know, big um, crowds of people. I know. I know. I mean, whatever. I mean, anyway. I'm sure they were masked up and whatnot, but still. Hey. And I'm still I'm still laying low. Even being here in New York, I haven't really gone out anywhere. I've just like walked the streets. The streets are too crowded already for me. I'm like, there's too many people around. <laughs> this is like way too much. It just feels unsafe still. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so in other Mariah news, um, now I found this out real quick. Um because one of my good friends is a big fan of Debbie Gibson. Like, if y'all don't know who Debbie Gibson is, she she's like a, I want to call her a one hit wonder, but I'm sure people will be real upset about that. Yeah. <laughs> but she had a big song in the 80s when she was like, you know, very, very young. Uh-huh. And everybody loved it. And um, she had posted on her social media. And so my friend was like, oh, my God, Debbie Gibson's talking about Mariah. And then Debbie Gibson made a video where Mariah sent her a voice uh, uh, DM, you could do that now? Yes, Did that's been know? a thing for a while. I mean, I didn't really know, but that's how they do it now. Mm-hmm. So she played, and Mariah sang her song. I know. Debbie Gibson's song. Yes. And I was like, girl, that sounds better than Debbie Gibson's, but we ain't going to talk about that because we love Debbie Gibson for sharing this with us. So like, <laughs> you know, all of that. But like, girl. <laughs> well, in my mind, it's like unofficial Butterfly Lounge content. She was in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That was just like a little snippet of of something like that. But even just seeing Debbie Gibson, who is, you know, from Long Island, even Mariah wrote about it in her book. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why, you know, I think Debbie Gibson said that Mariah originally reached out to her and said, oh, you know, I talked about you in my book. No, I think it was like an article or something, or maybe it was the book, but... um... Mariah had said, well, if Debbie can get a record deal, I can. And I think people were interpreting that as a diss. Right. And so Mariah wanted to clear the air. You know, Mariah, she's a nice lady over here. She ain't, she's not trying to just, you know, uh-huh. throw shade everywhere. <laughs> right. Um, no, but it's just, it's very sweet of Mariah to do that. She's like, just in case you get wind of this, it wasn't shade because I love your song. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, because they're Long Island girls. Right. They're going to stick together. Ex- honey yes absolutely and you know females in the music business and in the industry mm-hmm. which by the way uh we're going to talk about the music industry all of that because we're going to talk about mariah's final chapter in Masterclass coming up so stay tuned for that 
Yes, yes. Um, well, that was a fun little moment. We've got some new vocals from Mariah. That's Girl, what we always you know want. What? I haven't listened to Debbie Gibson's song "Only in My Dreams" probably in decades. Uh-huh. When Mar- when she played Mariah's little voice memo for us, girl, it was stuck in my head. I uh-huh. couldn't stop. I was just humming it for days. Yeah, because you know good. when Mariah takes something, she makes it her own. It sort of started uh, uh, a rumor, a, a wondering if Mariah was going to cover it. Maybe if she should. Well, I mean, I think it would be cute. I don't know if I want her covering an 80s song like that. I want new stuff. Yeah, I mean, I always want new stuff too. Don't get me wrong. But you know when Mariah does a cover song, it's usually something from the 80s. True. And she always does something better with it. True. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know either. (laughs) We'll see what happens. But either way... It's just good camaraderie for for the ladies. Yes. And we love that. It was a good social media moment. Absolutely. Speaking of social media, do you know the lambs out here? We got a new game on the social media. I do. I played it once. Did you play it? Uh, Yes, I played it like I think every day. But I got a lot of time on my hands. So, (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, explain to me. So what's it called? It's called um, Hurdle? Hurdle? Mariah version. The Mariah version. Now, I don't really know. I don't know much about anything that's happening here, but I think it's like something having to do with Wordle. Yeah, which but is audio. another sort of thing. But like yeah. this is, I don't know anything about Wordle. I, I think you. I think you got to guess what the word is with the least amount of letters. Yeah, that. I mean, I think that involves mathematics. So I don't have any. If you got to count, numbers, no, I think it involves the alphabet. Oh, well, then even worse, girl. Even <laughs> worse. <laughs> but this version of it, it, it involves the musical notes. Like, how fast can you recognize the song? Yes, and I'm doing really well with it. I've, well, I've hit every song in, like, one second. Yeah, I, the one time I played it, I did Oh Santa, and I got it in 1.5 seconds. Oh, yes, I think that's what it is, then, 1.5 seconds. Yeah, oh, you could, any Mariah song, I'm sure I would get it. Right. In one second. Because it's burnt into the brain. Oh, absolutely. Which 100%. is why when she's on stage hitting play on the CD, it's burnt. The brain is going, I know what this is. Exactly. Now, if it was <laughs> sort of like a live version of it, it might take me a beat or two to yeah. get to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It might take me a, a beat or two because I'm not like, my ears are not that good. <laughs> but, you know, I've been listening to these songs for decades and decades. So, girl, I know it. I know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I mean, people are having fun with it, but some people are complaining because it's too easy. Well, you know, that's just the life of a lamb, honey. Uh, yeah. It, you know, uh-huh. uh, you know, lamb problems. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But a little fun to be had out there in the world. I think go to Mariah Trends social pages. They have it, the links. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's cute. It's fun. You know, if it comes across my timeline, I'll usually, uh, you know, whatever you do, press play, I think. I think so, yeah. And Girl, don't get me. Don't get me. Um, and Okay, so now what about this news? We got the Mariah Pride merch. Okay, this was okay. This is a little controversial <laughs> over here. Well, is it? Well, uh, kind of. <laughs> okay, well, tell <laughs> me how. Well, here's what I don't like about it. It's that, yes, great. Love the participation in the Pride festivities and giving people options but the whole point of Pride and the whole March, the whole Pride March, and most of sale of the sales that happen on the day usually contribute towards some sort of charitable foundation, um, such as an LGBT center or organization or homeless shelter, like anything. Mm-hmm. Like every, everybody gets sort of, it's a community event. Um, and so this happened last year. People complained, but it sort of slid under the radar. But now it's happening again, and there's no communication as to any sort of charity that Mariah is attached to. So I think it is actually starting to look kind of bad. Okay. Well, I cannot, I cannot argue against that because I, I would say, um, yeah, it, it seems like it because, you know, I'm from the day back in the day when, you know, there was no pride, there was no, none of this, you know, the gays did what they did, but now it's become this, you know, uh, you know, capital greed, 
Mm-hmm. It's, you know, people are just doing it to make their little coins. They're mm-hmm. not really giving back. Now we know Mariah is very philanthropic and she does give her time and money to multiple things, but we're not really seeing that transparency here. Right. I think the the no um, charity attached to it is bad optics and needs to be communicated up the chain that you should be attaching some sort of, um, at least a donation to some sort of charity if you're, if you're going to be you know, joining in the pride sales and events. Exactly. Because, you know, nothing makes me upset more than every company, every artist, everybody just pride, pride, pride. And I'm like, where were you all 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? None Mm -hmm. of you cared until you realized you could make money off of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't appreciate that. I will say, I don't think this is a Mariah issue because I looked at the address that where it gets sent to whatever or sent from and it's Live Nation in LA. So I'm like, okay, this is a Live Nation issue. 100%. Mariah has no idea that this is not being, you know, part of, you know, an effort to give back support or blah, 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 all of those things. So so, there's no personal attack on Mariah here. No, no. But if I was Mariah, I'd be picking up the phone saying, um, hello, can we do something? Yeah, absolutely. Bad optics. Can somebody fix this, please? Please, hello. Knock, knock, knock. Anybody home? Right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I guess, yes, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. But we do have some cute merch. <laughs> yeah, but there's cute stuff to be got. <laughs> now, I haven't got any of that. You know, last week I showed y'all that I got those fantasy moments. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Pride merch wasn't hitting me this year like it was last year. Okay, I do like the neon rainbow i think that's pretty cute and possible purchase in the future that, yes that is cute and it's on theme with the whole rainbow and all of that i'm down for that that's probably one of the most um interesting or different items mm-hmm. that she's offering so we do like that but you know your the shirt or even the shorts with the rainbow spray paint and stuff it's like girl we've sort of seen that it's just a new version and honestly, I like last year's version where it's just the album cover. I don't need anything else. Those are cute. I do like the shorts. I think the shorts are kind of cute. I still want those biker shorts now that I look at it again a year later. I kind of want those. You see how it's like, oh, in the moment you don't want it, but then you look at it and you're like, you know what? Yeah. Those might work, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fan is back. Yes, yes, we love that. What else do they have? Oh, what about the cropped hoodies? Those were cute. Those were sort of cute, and I like it in pink. And that's what all the heterosexuals are wearing in the streets these days. Oh, is that right? Yes, that's the everyday look for people. Oh, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I did not know. Mm-hmm. Well, and they look like they're also distressed. Distressed is also a thing that's in. Vintage is very in. Vintage, you're know, all of the above. So I think I think there are some cute items there. So definitely, you know, um, add to the it collection. Is what it is. I mean, nothing, nothing too exciting for me, per se, but... Right. And you will get it sometime in June. You get it when you get it. In June? I don't think... Girl, June is like around the corner. It said June. Oh, well, they better start shipping now. Uh, they well, better ship this... as soon as, you know, they better ship as soon as you place the order. They're not used to doing that kind of thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not from my experience. <laughs> But anyways, anyways, if something catches your fancy, go there, MariahShop.com, and get you some Pride merch. And hopefully Mariah is giving something back to the LGBTQ community from this. Yeah, someone has to get on that. Hey, did you see that Madonna, speaking of Pride stuff, she's releasing like a major box set of all her dance tracks? I did see that, of course. Of course, my mind went, where's Mariah's one? I want a Mariah well, version. Well, here's the thing. I the first thing I did was like, well, Mariah did this in 2003, honey, because she got the double dicks. Di- uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me cough. She had the double disc version of the remixes back then. You know, one with the hip hop remixes and the club. Oh remixes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that was back then. I want a new one with all the things. Like, I want the MC30 in a physical box. No, 100%. Because, you know, from what I see with what Mariah's giving or what Madonna's giving, she's giving, like, very much a a very intensive, deep dive. Like, it has 50 tracks on it. I know. 
I know. And it's not just, you know, Mariah did her MC30, which is amazing and great. And I'm so grateful for it. And it's all digital. But Madonna is doing like 50 tracks on a physical CD and vinyl. And there's a booklet and all of that. I want MC30 on my shelf. So I can flick through it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I mean, I think again, Madonna's sort of copying this Mariah trend. I don't know who started releasing like old, old, you know, vault things, but mm-hmm. I see that Madonna has been doing a lot of that. And, you know, I guess it is a good commemorative moment. Yeah. Because she's releasing it for commemorating 50 number ones on the dance album or the dance song chart. Right. But Mariah did that in 1998 on the Billboard Hot 100 number ones chart, and that's what she did back in 98. Uh huh. With number one. She was ones. doing that in the 90s. Yeah. So Mariah did it first. I'm just saying I want more. Okay, I do want more too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of that stuff. I don't need a t shirt. I want a box of music. Well, that, yes, yes. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Well, you know, hopefully one of these days we'll get some more. You know, there are still rumors of something coming for Butterfly 25. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There, We could maybe be getting something there. We'll have to wait and see. Yes, right around the corner, though. Hey, um, speaking of dicks, Big what? Energy <laughs> is doing well on the Billboard chart. Still number four. Mariah's not credited yet. And it's what it's doing. I think it's creating buzz on social media because people want to know where the video is where's the video yes people want to know where the video is and um i do see a lot of people um you know tweeting or storying or whatever they do with it it's i mean it's pretty big i even feel like there's this new thing that i've been seeing a lot of and i guess they call it maybe like a trend Mm-hmm. where they um, will say, oh, Mariah will be famous forever because, like, look at all these people. Like, for instance, at the Lotto concert, they were singing We Belong Together uh-huh. in the audience. Yes. And then it became this thing of, like, see, Mariah will always be famous. She will always be legendary because you can get a whole crowd of people of a younger generation mm-hmm. to sing like that at somebody else's show. Mm-hmm. You know, like, that's big. Huge. It says a lot. Huge. Huge. Where's the video, though? I didn't answer the okay, question. But where, <laughs> <laughs> where is the video? Well, that is a good question because... You Do you know, think it's gone the way of our Christmas special? Just went in the bin? I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. You know, because the Billboard Music Awards are coming up. And, you know, I gave yes. you my theory the other week about what I think is happening there. Right. Um, I think they're going to wait until that big performance from the Billboard Awards to see they're going to like reassess, you know, the feeling for everything with this song and then maybe put it out, you know, so they can capitalize on, you know, the song being on the TV, people are being introduced to it and now there's a music video. So it still could be coming around that time. So I say by the end of the month, if not sooner. Okay. Yeah. So the Billboard Music Awards are on May 15th this year. Okay. I think, well, that, I think it's next week. Yes. Yeah, less than two weeks away. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. But I think we have another week or two to Wait, like. Where are they? They're over here in Vegas, aren't they? Over there yes, in Vegas. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. If Mariah's at Disneyland on the West Coast, is she. Sneaking over there, you know, Mariah. She's sneaky. Sometimes she'll pop up where we're where we unexpect uh, her to pop up. So yeah. you never know. It could be a major moment. It could be a major moment because here's the thing: I don't. I'm not really worried about the video, even though I do want a video. I'm worried about when is she going to be credited on the Billboard Hot 100 for this song? Okay, that's well, I'm my like, main Luke- concern. I'm low-key blaming her for that because she's not on the TV performing it everywhere. Like, she should be promoting it. She's barely, she's doing a few posts and that's kind of it. Yeah, but I think, I don't know. I think there's a lot of politics involved in her doing, like, actual physical appearances with this song. You know what I mean? I think she put in her time and her effort already. And unless there's big dollars behind a 
you know, an in-person appearance, I don't think she's going to do it. I wouldn't do it. But who See, am I? In my mind, I'd be doing it just to try and get that 20th, number one. Well, we'll see. Uh, but I don't know if that would do it. Would that push the song enough? We need her version pushed. We do need her version pushed. Because I hear over in Australia, it's doing really well. It's doing her very well. Version. Her yeah. version. It's like number one on the radio charts. Yeah, that's big. We big. love that. Yes, especially in Australia is a driving culture. You have to drive everywhere. Uh huh. So people are hearing it in the cars. All right. Getting the brainwashed. So then they'll go home. They're going to play it. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Well, hopefully, again, I think I said this weeks ago, I think this is going to be a slow grower for us. Mm -hmm. I know it's in the top five of the Billboard Hot 100, but I think this song still has a lot of life left in it. It does. I don't think we're, we're not dry yet. I'm just worried we're losing steam and we're going to fall down. Yes, but that's why I think the it's it's perfect timing for the Billboard Music Awards. Mm. You know, and again, if Mariah's just on the screen in the back, I think that'll be enough. Okay. You know, I don't I mean, I don't know, but we'll we'll keep our eye on it and um, you know, see what's going on. We'll see. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. You know, Mariah knows what to do. She's been surviving the music industry for a while. Now, yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> that brings us to the final uh, lesson in the masterclass with Mariah Carey. Yeah. Um, now, this last episode is where we obviously get to hear her version of The Roof, When I Feel It, featuring Brandy, which we've already talked about. But again, it keeps growing on me more and more. I love it more and more. So, No, same. I have a new theory, a new thought about it. Love the okay. strings, love the strings still. Uh -huh. And now I think listening to it, I think the strings actually gives it more of a hip hop vibe. In like to me, it's sounding more like a Wu Tang song. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think it's I think it's given it a new dimension that does that the original doesn't have. I think so too, but I think so maybe in a different way. I think it adds more of a dimension of it just adds sort of like that uh, other layer of a, a different genre. Mm -hmm. I don't think it necessarily adds a layer of like, you know, the hip hop genre. Cause I think that's already intrinsically in it. This I think lifts it in a different way, but that's why it hits us all differently. I love the strings though. Love the strings. I also would love a string version of it. No vocal. Just give me some strings. You know what? That sounds real good. I want an instrumental. Yes. Put that on the streaming. Please give me an so EP of it. To that. Yes. Yeah. That could be your ringtone, your alarm in the morning. I mean, that could just be playing in the background. Right. Yes. You know, and I'm not usually a fan of Mariah instrumentals because I'm, I, you know, I'm vocal. I want uh -huh. the vocal. We're here for the but Mariah. That one, I like it so much. I, I, I could be down with that. This is what I was saying. I think we talked about this um, a little while ago, what she should do with these songs that she doesn't really sing, and yeah, do give us a uh, instrumental with strings of the roof. Do the same thing with butterfly. Just give me an instrumental with a full orchestra. That would be beautiful too, actually. Right? Uh huh. I mean, I've always been a fan of Mariah incorporating more live musicians in her music. Mm -hmm. You know, remember when? she released that teaser for the art of letting go. Yes. And there were all those people playing the music. Uh-huh. Girl, I was gagged. Yeah. I was like, that's what I want. That's what I want to hear. Or like, you know, think of when she works with Mark Shaman on all the Christmas songs. Uh-huh. How beautiful and lush they sound. Right. I want more of that. Get, I will take an, a full instrumental album. Look at us always making up more stuff we want. Never enough. Just never enough. <laughs> <laughs> we want more. I want all a full instrumental of all live mu music. <laughs> no vocals, no nothing. I'll take it. Well, see, but after watching the way she conducts the strings, like it is a version of her singing the song. Very true. Very true. You see? You know, because she uses her voice as an instrument. Right. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. But also, like, now we know it's not just some string players reading the sheet music that was copied off something. Like, she's there 
um, helping, you know, curate it, get the notes perfect, etc. Yeah, because she hears it, she hears a specific note or a specific transition or a specific chord that she wants. And now we see how she really does it. Yes. Genius, genius. Uh-huh. Um, so also in this last episode um, of the master class, she talks, it's, based, it's called Surviving the Music Business. And she talks about, you know, all the things that she went through. Um, but she touches on a couple of topics that are very interesting. And I, I actually want more. You know, this, you know, the song was a great ending to the episode. But girl, tell me more. Tell me <laughs> more about what it was like, you know, when you got your first deal. Like we found out in the book that that man was stealing all her money for years. Oh, Ben Margulies? Yeah, ben Margulies. Finagling the contract, tricking people. Exactly. Uh-huh. And then she was talking in this episode as well about, you know, 360 deals. Yes, that's a now, big thing these days. Yeah, they didn't have that when Mariah was out and around. But I wonder, again, going back to the Pride merchandise and whatnot, mm-hmm. I wonder if there is some level of 360 deal involved because if she's going through Live Nation for her merchandise is she also doing that is that where her management company is coming through like people like melissa like i don't know how that is with her record contract no i bet there's some sort of deal in place where so she's with epic right yes okay so she's at epic she probably the deal is probably epic gets a cut of out of ticket sales and merchandise sales and so live nation probably pays epic a piece of the pie so you think that's a completely separate deal or an outside i think they're inter intertwined oh okay all together that's what the 360 is you know a lot of it's very confusing Mm -hmm. you know if you're not in the business you probably it, it it is very confusing to you unless you know um because even there were some times where Mariah was like, I don't even know like how it really, really works. She's talking about getting a uh, one sixteenth of a penny for a stream. On the streaming. Yeah, that's what it is. Girl, that's wild. Yes. And you think, well, Mariah has to be getting like one sixteenth of a penny is probably for your average Joe. Yeah. Mariah must be getting more than that. I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, um, that's wild. She... Probably negotiated a deal to get it a little bit higher, but I can't imagine it's like a bajillion dollars that she's getting or anything. No, but I would imagine she at least gets a penny. I don't know. That seems like a lot of money. (coughs) I mean, it seems like a lot of money, but it's a penny. Yeah, but look at how the Christmas song just had like a billion streams. What's a billion pennies? Uh, that's a lot of math. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's a hundred million dollars? <laughs> no, I mean a billion pennies has to be. I would say a million dollars, just if I'm just off the top of my head. You think? A Don't million. make me get the calculator out. All right, get the calculator. How many zeros are in a billion? I've never had to calculate a billion. <laughs> um, let me see: three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Nine zeros? I think. Or is that a hundred million? No, that's a hundred million. That's a hundred million? It doesn't even go up to a billion on the calculator. It doesn't go up to a bill. Girl. What are what year are we living in? 1980? I guess. Well, who knows? Who knows what a billion streams is, but wait, why are we counting Mariah's money? I have no idea. Because we have <laughs> that's what we do, because we're crazy. We're crazy. <laughs> um <laughs> Because, you know, when Mariah first signed her deal over there at Sony, um, you know, she, they didn't. Oh, here it is. Uh, It's the code word. This is your chance to win a whole year of Masterclass on us. Enter in the description below on the episode description. There's a link. There's a form. Type in your name. Type in your email. And the code word, which is Sony. This week's code word is Sony. So get in it to win it. This is our last one. You get a whole year. No strings attached. Get it. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. And tell your friends too about it. Yeah, anyone can enter. Anyone can enter. Just put the word Sony. Um, But when Mariah was back at Sony, 
the, streaming was not even in the consciousness of, um, you know, a record deal or, yeah. you know, um, negotiating for a record deal. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like, you know, when Mariah renegotiated her record deal, you know, to go back sort of to Sony or Epic Records or wherever exactly she is now, I would think that she would negotiate more than a penny. Like, I want more than one sixteenth for a stream. Maybe. Or do you think that has nothing to do with the record deal and it's a whole separate thing? I don't, well, say, I don't know how it works. No, see, that's the Apple and Spotify situation, not the record deal. Yeah, but who negotiates those types of things? Like, who? this is what I want to know. Who is uploading Mariah's music to the Apple? I think Sony. But then okay. the... But then the Apple and the Spotify are saying, you get what you get. This is what you get. Well, I'm going to need Lisa Left Eye Lopez to break it down. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know when she did Behind the Music back in the day. Yeah. And she was like, let me tell you how the biggest selling girl group of all time can be bankrupt. Uh huh. And she did the math work for us. So, you know, rest in peace, Lisa Left Eye. But I need someone like her to tell me the breakdown of how this works with the streaming, especially for, for major artists. Yes. Well, Mariah's complaint is that these major streaming platforms, I guess she can't complain about Apple, but like Spotify's, they're in the billions. They have billions of dollars. Like, why aren't the artists getting paid? Exactly. Uh -huh. You know, like when Mariah in the masterclass was talking about, oh, and she also talked about it in her book, but like they offered her $5,000 for her publishing for that song. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're going to take that song and you're going to make a million dollars from it. So mm -hmm. 5000 absolutely not. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. No. These record companies are, again, capitalizing off of these artists, off their hard work and yeah. their creativity, and it's not fair. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me preaching, though. Don't get me preaching. Well, also, that's why a lot of artists, they sign a record deal and they never release music. They're just, like, stuck. They can't... The company owns them, basically. Yeah, or a lot of these artists will sign these 360 deals. So no matter what they're doing, like, let's say they never release an album, but they're going out on tour. The record mm -hmm. label is taking that revenue as well. Or they're selling merchandise. They're taking that revenue. Right. It's insanity. Yeah. That's the way it is these days. It's it's outrageous. It's really outrageous. Absolutely. Absolutely outrageous. Well, that's why she was teaching the lesson. She was raising the red flags. If you're a brand new artist trying to make it in the biz. I know. But sometimes you have to sort of, you know, because I wonder, would anybody get a deal if it's not a 360 deal in today's world? Mm -hmm. If Mariah was coming up, today do you think they would be like mariah comes in there she's like no i don't want a 360 deal and they're mm -hmm. like oh okay sure we'll just give you you know what this and this no i don't think they even have an option for that kind of stuff anymore mm -hmm. you know it's all or nothing you either sign this or you get nothing from us mm -hmm. so you know good luck so it's almost like well i guess i have to sign this because what are my other options i don't have any right I don't sad know. situation it's complicated it really is. It really is. I know, um, I know. You know, this whole record industry. And, you know, poor JoJo for years could not release any music because of her record label um, shenanigans going on over there. Yes, it exactly. Years. Yes, it's, yes. Mm -mm -mm. And let's not even get into Miss Taylor Swift and what she's doing with the record labels. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot of finagling. Oy. It All is right. what it is. Well, I think that concludes our Masterclass Month. Yes, indeed. But before we go, don't forget, it really helps us if you leave a review on Apple Podcasts or hit the five-star rating on Spotify and on Apple. Um, but I know it sounds crazy, but it actually helps the show grow, and that's how they track, that's how they measure the charts, like how much interaction happens on the podcast app. So if you can, he can head over to your Apple Podcast app, um, find the Mariah Report in the search and just scroll down. You'll see the review section. Just type in something. Type in your favorite lesson of Masterclass and that's all you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Type in anything. Type in anything. 
Yeah, but we actually have a new review that we're going to read out, and it's from Australia, so you can be anywhere in the world. And it says, uh, this podcast has come back into 2022 with a bang. So glad to hear the boys unpacking everything Mariah related. Feels like you're listening to your besties. Catch up on what Mimi has been working on. We'd love to hear it. All D penis. Uh, <laughs> By <laughs> Apple Podcast Australia. Today's theme again is D's. It's the B, the big D's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that's life. That's just how it goes. But, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, thanks for tuning in and thanks for supporting. We're going to go over to Patreon now. Not- now and do our after show we got girl we're gonna we got to talk about the met gala over there on the patreon oh There's absolutely a lot to say about the maryland dress uh, the whole thing christopher buckle was doing makeup serge our hair guy that we love was doing uh-huh. sjp's hair we got we got to talk we got to talk we got to we got to talk we got to go we got to go join us the link is in the description patreon.com slash the mariah report it's five bucks a month you get tons of content now and cancel anytime supports the show over here. The inflation is hitting the Mariah oh, Report. Girl, can we talk about the inflation over on the after show too? Yes. yes. <laughs> Please. I had to change the thing that we edit because the Pro Tools went crazy with the inflation. It's outrageous. I forgot to tell you. I switched things. Anyway, okay. come we'll join talk. us, please. <laughs> bye. All right, bye. The Mariah Report is produced and edited by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Hosted by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Graphics created by Sean Mark. Theme music created by e B. Thank you to the listeners who support the show on Patreon. If you'd like to show your support or for more information, visit the show notes in your podcast app. <laughs>